So in this presentation, we're going to look at the need to make sure that the exposed conductive path is connected to the CPC. I've taken one of my simple exercises with some of my learners and I've stretched the more able by adding in metallic light switches, two of, two foot fluorescent light fitting and a bulkhead light fitting. All four are exposed conductive parts. They're electrical and they're metal and require connecting to the CPC. Therefore, during our continuity of CPC and polarity test, I want to prove that this metal work is connected to earth. In order to do that, I'm not happy with this just probing on to where the CPCs are connected in either light switches or light fittings. I want to prove that the actual metal work is connected to earth. So in this presentation, we're gonna look at making sure that the exposed conductive part is connected to the CPC during our continuity of CPC and polarity test. Let's have a look at that test. So we're all set up for continuity of CPC, removed the resistance of the leads, I've set my instrument to ohms, and we're ready to perform that test. I've shown that many times in other video presentations. This is all about proving that the exposed conductive part is connected to the CPC. I've linked onto my switching line within my bulkhead fitting, and I can take my first reading by actually going on to the position where the CPC was fitted. And we got a reading of 1.14. Then we'll go through our switching sequence. We'll see that reading change. Remember, we're looking to get the highest reading depending on how much of the strappers are in circuit. So this is two-way intermediate. So hopefully we go off, come back on, off, on, and then off again. We can turn it on from any switching point we like, so we're going to leave it in the on position for insulation resistance that carries out later on. So we're on to the actual metal work now. So I'm on onto the back of the box and I've probed onto the actual metal work. Got a reading of 1.14 onto the chassis. Might have to scratch it a little bit in order to get a reading. I'm now 1.14. 1.4 again, and then maybe on the screw at the bottom down here. Press nice and firm, and I've got a read in approximately 1.35. So I've proved the CPC gets into the actual bulkhead fitting, all well and good. But I need to prove that the actual metal work, the exposed conductive part, is connected to the CPC. So I can scratch the paint on the inside, go onto the chassis, I can take the lamp holder itself and a bolt down the bottom. So I've chose two or three different positions to prove it is connected to the CPC. Vitally important the exposed conductive part is connected to the CPC and not just the CPC conductor is present. Let's go to a light switch next. Same process down at the metallic light switch. We're going to prove that we pick up a line conductor, we've left it on, so wherever we can pick up a line conductor and we'll go on to where the CPCs are connected. Then we'll perhaps go on to the, the metal work adjacent to it and then perhaps into the actual back of the switch itself. Remember, no scratching the front of the switch in order to pick up the CPC, customer won't be too um, impressed with that. So let's probe into one of the line conductors and where the CPC is connected. Reading of barrel 0.21, actually onto the connection for the CPC got about 0.2, jumping around a little bit, 0.35, and then actually onto the metal work itself, and I've got about 0.33. So we've proved the CPC gets to the termination in the metallic light switch, exposed conductive part. We've proved it gets to the strap and to the actual chassis or body of the metal light switch itself. So we've proved it's got an earth. The CPC is connected at that exposed conductive part. We'll repeat the process for the same for the second switch. I've already done it, so I won't repeat that on video, but I am going to do the fluorescent light fitting next. Let's see that next. So I repeated the process as I did in the switch, in this switch, proving the exposed conductive part is connected to the CPC in three different positions. So now going to the fitting itself, once again, I'll connect onto switching line and the connector where the CPC is connected. And we see we've got a reading, it's jumping a little bit. Let's go through the switching sequence. Remembering the highest reading goes off, comes on, goes off, back on, off. And then we've got to leave it on because obviously insulation resistance requires it to be left on, which we're carrying out next. So circuit comes back on. So we've proved the CPC gets into the connector, all well and good. This is an exposed conductive part. So I'm gonna go on the switching line and I've just scratched a little bit of paint away in here, and I've got a reading of 0. so one ohm. 
and then perhaps I'll go into the bolt holding on the electronic components. And again, I've got a reading about 1.03 ohms. So I've proved the CPC actually gets to the connector block, all well and good. There is a tag at the back of these that sometimes breaks or is missing. So have I proved the exposed conductive part is connected to the CPC? Yes, because I've removed a little bit of paint on the inside, gone onto the metal work and one of the exposed bolts in there in order to prove it's connected to the CPC. We'll check the switches, so we've done polarity. We're now ready for insulation resistance test next. This video presentation was all about proving exposed conductive parts were connected to the CPC. I hope this video has been some help.